You know what? You know when we hooked up years ago? Like, it was, you were supposed to come on the show, something happened, I don't know, like, you know. And then it was like, oh yeah, it'll connect the day after. And then we did an interview in Hyde Park. Legendary interview, classic. <laughs> like, some Nostalgic. People, some people <laughs> tried to imitate, not pulled it off. Right. It was cool. And I said, it feels like you're going to make history. And you're making history. And it's been a crazy journey, like, in the last seven years. Yeah, it's, it's been it's been wild. I was watching. Uh, that's kind of like how we ended up here. When I got here, I was just like kind of in my room, just trying to find like my like lineage of, of of coming to London, and you know, just trying to figure out like where it all started. And um, and I just watched that Hyde Park interview, and I'm watching this kid. You know, <clears throat> it's me, but I, I mean, to me, it's a kid that just like you know is just trying his hardest to you know, answer questions in the best way possible. And, you know, just the fact that we were just walking around, it was like mm. me, you, and a microphone and a mm. camera. Um, and I was like, man, I should hit Semtex up, man. We should talk again. Because I just listened to the conversation. We had a good conversation. You know, I felt like we covered a wide spectrum of things. And I think it's been a long time since somebody's been able to, you know, sit down and do that with me. So that's how we're here. How does it feel to go from, you know, because you was doing mixtapes before that, but that was the mixtape that really broke you. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Two Dope Boys and Now Right, because I discovered you through those websites. Right. And they were like, yo, this guy Drake, and da 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 da. And before that, little Wayne mentioned you in an interview, but you know, like when someone says a list of names, you don't really cluck. But, right. you know, in the back of those sites, like, I was getting the first couple of joints from there, and I was blazing. I was like, yo, this, this is sick. I need to be blazing this. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, and it's just it's just grown from there, and it, you've been nonstop. Like it's it's crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean that was a that was an amazing time for all of us. You know, I mean we um, still yeah. with the day ones. Yeah, yeah, still, yeah, still, still doing it with the same people, and um, yeah, it was it was it was just uh, you know we always like. Our, our landmark for that project is 15 Fort York, which was, you know, 40 and Oliver's apartment. Mm. And we we um, really started that project there. And then uh, it moved to the Beverly Hills Hotel in L.A. when we were just first kind of getting around Wayne. And I know Wayne mentioned me in the interview, but the real turning point for me was like when Wayne um, when Wayne uh, went on stage at the MTV Awards and rapped uh, one of the verses for Money to Blow instead of doing his own verse. He just like impromptu rapped one of my verses. And at that time, people were like, yo, that's like, that's like, you know, people from back home who really didn't, I mean, it was just a tough thing to believe. Like, mm. I know he says he's over there, but is he gonna come home with a little Wayne record? Is this gonna really happen? Like. You know, at that time, people were like, okay, he just rapped Drake songs. Like, if he gets a Wayne record, this is out of here. And um, and that was, like, when I was able to come back off those trips with Ransom. You know, I went back home with Ransom, which was the first time I had ever got a little <clears throat> Wayne verse. And, uh, you know, from there, I had a bunch of songs that I had recorded at, at the studio called Hot Beats. And Wayne just got on all of them, like, Stunt Hard and Forever was one of them. Uh, early, early, and and yeah, and then uh, we just you know we started we started crafting crafting that first project and uh, using the input of of two people who again I've, I've I still work with to this day and my music wouldn't be what it is without them. That's Oliver and Forty, who, which you know it's, it's funny we're sitting here talking and they're back in Toronto, executive producing um, uh, more life. Uh, Oliver's executive producing it, and Forty's obviously always involved, yeah. but. Um, kind of just a full circle moment for us because Oliver had so much input on So Far Gone. So I was like, man, you know, it'd be nice to do something me and you again. Um, so I gave him that that task. So he's at home piecing it together. But yes, it, it, it was uh, it was it was a great start. And from there, um, from there, it just just became a, a, a wild journey that I guess we'll mm. talk about. You know? A lot to talk about. More yeah, talk. And, One talk, yeah. And then, um, things that were right at the beginning, we're talking about Little Wayne and so forth. I was in Amsterdam and Little Wayne was like, yo, I'm about to do this thing with Young Money. We've got all these guys, like Jay Mills, Good Good, and mm -hmm. Nicki Minaj, and this kid from the Grassy High, like, yo, he's crazy, da 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 da. Yeah. And because we didn't get the Grassy High in the UK, I was like, oh, okay. And yeah. he says, but yo, he's been writing on the detox. Mm. So I was like, wow, because that, that was like, the mythical album, and, yeah. you know, Dr. Dre, Kraft and the Detox, like, you got to be about your business to be involved yeah. in that or to be in the studio. How did you end up 
from doing a TV show to working with Dr. Dre, like writing for him on the detox? Um, it's well, taking it back. Yeah, it's taking okay. it back, yeah. Um, I'm actually usually not good with these taking it back moments, right. but I remember this one vividly. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I was on the show, and while I was on the show, um, I started getting less and less, you know, uh, character time because mm -hmm. of the fact that everybody was taking a notice to just the fact that I was more focused on music. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I actually had a studio that was right by the, um, right by the film studio mm -hmm. for Degrassi. So I... Um, I ended up uh, working out a deal with like the after hours staff where I would leave work, go home, get my stuff, which was like, you know, Degrassi was all the way in the East End, which is like Scarborough. That's like a place, like an area of our city. I'd go home all the way back to the city, get my stuff, come back to the studio. I would record and then around like 4 or 5 a.m. I would sneak back into Degrassi. They'd let me in and I would go to sleep in my dressing room. Wow. Um, and they, you know, eventually they found out what I was doing and they got really upset. But during that time, I was crafting all these songs and I had a song uh, that Omen produced uh, by, uh, it was me and uh, Mickey Fax. Right. Okay. Mickey, you remember yeah, Mickey yeah, Fax, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and somebody else was on it, man. And I'm, I'm, I think, uh, but so um, Dre had heard the song. And um, and he had hit me like, man, I need proof that you wrote this. <laughs> so he's like, I, it was it was like this was I had to fax him the lyrics of the song. Serious. I had to send him a fax <laughs> message like from my mom's fax machine in her bedroom. I sent him a fax, and um, and you know at that time detox was going on, and it was just more like he had like just a camp of people, just mm. I guess you know churning out ideas and mm. just trying to get you know spark something. And I was, uh, I was flown out uh, to uh, record at Record One, um, which is a legendary studio. Mm. And yeah, I was in there for a while. Um, I did a lot of work, me and Forty. Um, always brought Forty with me, with me. That was like a stipulation in my career. I, I wouldn't move without Forty. So brought Forty and uh, got to meet a lot of great people. Obviously got to work with Dre um, and um, it kind of all came to an end when uh, I, um, Dre gave me, a, uh, he brought me into his office. He's like, man, you're doing really good work. And uh, he gave me a $10,000 check. And I, it was the most money I'd ever had in my life. And at the time I was in a relationship. So I, uh, I got the money and I like called my girl and I flew my girl down to LA and I was like, oh, we could get a hotel. This is crazy. <laughs> like, you know, it was just a joyous moment for me. <clears throat> and I had, uh, I had missed studio or I had done something right. wrong in the, in the, you know, just, I had let, let that, I had let my mind deviate from work and I right. had missed something. And, um, you know, next thing I know I was, you know, I was sent home and that was kind of it. Um, Crazy and it lesson. was a huge, it was a huge life lesson for me, you know. Right. Um, and I still have that. Uh, actually, when Dre came out uh, at the um, at the forum, I uh, brought him the, the ten thousand dollar check because wow. I had saved the actual hard copy of it, even right. though I got the money for it. Yeah, they yeah. let me, they let me keep a wow. copy of the check. So um, yeah, that was kind of my my uh, my my dealings with that very early on. Okay. Um, and I had heard rumblings like, oh, all these, you know, all these people are here. And I think like, I had met Snoop and I had mm. kind of wrote this song that 40 still has somewhere mm. for Dre and Snoop. Um, and we listened to it like not too long, a couple of years ago. It was actually hard. I kind of wish they had done it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a great experience, a learning experience for me and 40. It brought us closer um, and it just taught us about how this, you know, how this really works. Um, okay. And I think that 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 set us on our own path. So let's fast forward okay. to like 2015, 2016, like Views, one of the most successful albums, the, the tour that you did in America is one of the most successful tours. And how do you feel about what you've achieved with Views and the reaction? Because it's, it's, it's a pretty, very pivotal point for you, you know? It was one of those moments in my career where the album started to build and build and build and, you know, when anticipation starts to build, mm. um, it can either result in like massive failure or massive success. And, you know, uh, obviously somebody's watching over us and it resulted in massive success for us. 
And um, it was also just an opportunity for me to really uh, take a lot of risks mm. that um, I felt I was ready to take at that, mm. at that moment. Um, and yeah, it, it uh, I, I mean, I, I was obviously really proud of it from the title to the cover, mm. uh, to just the styles of music that mm. I felt, you know, we introduced almost as a package, you know, it kind of mm. started with work because work came out before mm. my album. Um, and then, you know, uh, like, uh, progressed into One Dance, Controller, Too Good. Mm. But just, you know, the, the style of music that was making me happy at the mm. time, because to be, you know, completely honest with you, uh, I was having trouble um, figuring myself out in rap at that time. Right. I was a very defensive individual, you know, just coming off the situations that I had come off of. And I was right. having trouble trying to make... Um, you know, rap music where I was able to peel back the layers and, and, you know, every time I'd make a song, you know, 40 would is always very bluntly honest with me. And he'd be like, man, you sound like aggressive or defensive. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to figure out why. Mm -hmm. And I realized it was just, you know, reaction to my, my previous situation that had kind of happened um, before that. And so there was a time where I actually thought about taking all the rap off of views and just making it like an album full of music that made See? me happy with melody and but obviously, you know, I, I know why I'm here. You know, I know who my core mm. fan base is. Um, and so, you know, towards the end of the album, I tried to execute as best mm. I could um, on the rap end. And, you know, I still listen to the bars, and I, I know exactly where I was at. So they are great to me, and they are time markers to me. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's – I guess we'll get into more life after right, yeah, how yeah. That, that situation yeah. progressed. But, yeah, Views for us was um, – it was it was it was it was surreal, you know. I mean, the numbers and um, all the all the things that we were able to achieve. It was it was it was an incredible time for us. Um, and of course, you know, in true OVO fashion, we didn't celebrate at all. We just kind of went on to working on the next thing. So I mean, that was that was kind of uh, yeah, that was kind of it. It was just another album to us, you know. It wasn't my biggest album by any means. It wasn't the one to me. It was just. Just another, you know, another chapter in the story. But, I mean, I'm very grateful for all the people that enjoyed it and supported it. And, you know, whether people want to admit it or not, I mean, the influence that it's directly had on music, I feel, yeah. is very evident whether people want to say it. What, when you did One Dance, did you know what you was doing when you made that track? Because you used, you know, a portion of Kyla's track with Crazy Cousins. That's a UK underground classic out here. Like, I'm sure you've seen it go up in the clubs. You got Wizkid on there, you know, from Nigeria. It's it's a truly global record because I think very few people have done what you've done in terms of mixing everything with the US and the UK and African sounds. But when you did one dance, did did you did you know this was going to be as big as what it was like? Because it, it was like it was the song of the year, you know. It really all started with the Kylo record. You know, it was just a song that I played. I mean. We DJ our own parties just because. Oh, sorry. How did you discover it though? Because that's like a UK uh, funky sound that is very insular in the UK. Yeah, I mean, I just I, I listen to a lot of music, you know. I um, and I have friends with great taste in music, so I've been I've been personally putting that song in my own playlist and DJ set for like f you know four or five years now. I know right. it's 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 I know yeah. it's older than that, but even just playing it and, and having people, you know, what really what really said something off for me was having people in America come up to me and be like, yo, what's that song you just played? And wow. I'd be like, man, people really like that song, you know, and but they don't know it. Yeah, yeah. And so um, I just, my, my, my brain started working of like, you know, how can I maybe like utilize a, a bit of the, it's such a, there's so many good pieces. Mm. So um, I introduced the concept to 85 and I said to him like, man, you know, if we can make a beat, it's not like I don't want to do a cover. I want to write a whole new song. I just yeah. want Kyla to serve as the bridge or as like a as a bridge to the next verse mm. or the, as a bridge to the hook. And um, and he was like, all right, all right, cool. And you know, I had the I had the beat for a while. I was trying to figure it all out. And um, and yeah, you know, at that time I had met Wizkid through uh, through Skepta because we did uh, we did a remix to one of Wizkid's yeah, songs yeah. together. It was dope. Yeah, um, and it just kind of all really fell into place naturally. And when it was all said and done, um, it was one of those moments, much like Hotline Bling, 
I just didn't really know how people were going to feel about it. Mm. And that was part of the reason why I dropped pop style along with it, because I was mm. kind of like almost nervous, like, man, you know, I don't like this is yeah. so different. Let me just make sure I drop a rap record so people yeah. know I'm still on my shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember Boy Wonder uh, had walked into the studio one night and he uh, and he had heard one dance. And he just looked at me and he's like, yo, that's that's going to be the biggest song of your career to date. And I was like, come on, man. It's like, <laughs> I, I don't know. That's a lot to say. Yeah. You know, like, we hope it does well. Yeah. But. And, uh, and yeah, he was right. And he was right. And it was just, uh, I think it was the perfect marriage of a lot of things. Mm. Uh, you know, so many... Thank yous to Kyla for just being, you know, so supportive. She came mm. out to like South Africa and shot a movie with us wow. for the song, and um, and you know, of course, Wizkid doing his mm. thing, and you know, um, yeah, and just the entire UK for just you know mm. supporting it, and the world for being open to listening to it. I love that tempo. I love that cadence. Those mm. melodies. That's the music that makes me happy in life. So it was great to be able to just um, to 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 make something like that and to shine light on a song from the UK that deserves it because that is truly a classic so with pop style like what what happened with that because when I got it originally shout out to Morgan I was talking about early but yeah. you know it was Jay-Z and Kanye on it and then they kind of went on it like yeah um I mean you know I, de I was dealing directly with Ye <clears throat> and um you know he just, that's the version that he sent me. And um, that was, you know, what we, what we had talked about, which was like, he's like, man, you know, this is like pop style featuring the throne. This is mm. huge. And I was excited. You know, obviously anybody would be excited to see them link back up. And then I didn't know what I was going to hear. So when I heard like Jay had two bars, I was like, all right, I mean, it is what it is. <clears throat> it's cool. I like that. You know, it's a little intro and then Kanye goes off. Um, and then, you know, I, I'm, I'm not really sure the details between that, how that conversation was miscommunicated or what they were going through at the time um, or, you know, what anybody felt towards me or whatever it was. I'm not really sure. But next thing I knew, it just became a bit of an issue. And, um, you know, from there, I really, you know, I don't, I don't waste too much time. So I just was like, all right, cool, I'll finish it. You know, the song is, I mean... I can rap as good as anybody else, so I, 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 I'll just go finish the song and um, and put forth my own version because I don't really like you know nobody can ever like dangle anything over my head right. in this business you know I don't I don't play that so right. it was just uh, yeah it was just it just needed to be done and I did it myself and um, yeah both versions exist you know so yeah. I mean uh, and when Kanye comes out to do it at the shows it goes crazy. Yeah. And I know he was. I know he was really upset because um, yeah. you know we, at that time we were working together pretty heavy, mm. and um, and he and, and and he really wanted to be on the record. But you know, I mean, uh, on, the, on the Pablo tour, you know, he said a lot of things that's well documented. But he was also saying about, you know, before the last show, he was talking about how he was sick of not being able to do certain things or whatever, and he was saying everyone should just come together and make music. Does you know, it's gone from label politics. Is it digital politics now that prevents things from happening? Um, I don't know. I think everybody has their own little things going on. You know, I'm not really sure what he's referring to half the time, you know, because in the same breath, I mean, uh, you know, I went from being, like, working on a project with him to him sort of, like, publicly sh on me and DJ Khaled for being on the radio too much, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and It's not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> obviously. Um, but yeah, I'm not really sure. Like, you know, everybody's got their own thing going mm -hmm. on. Um, and, you know, again, me, when, when I hear when I hear that, I just like, you know, I just distance myself from it. Like, all right, you know, if that's what it is, you know, yeah. I, I don't really even understand the point you're trying to make. But, you know, whatever it is that you're going yeah. through, I, yeah. you know, I accept it. I don't respect it at all, you know, because <clears throat> I feel like me and Khaled are both mm. just like good people. You know, mm. I'm not really sure why we're, we're the target of your, you, mm. you know, choice that you made that night. But again, you know, I, I accept what you're going mm. through. And, you know, I just go and continue working on my own mm. thing. And, um, you know, the more and more this progresses, the more and more I just feel like keeping to myself because mm. it's just so unpredictable. You never know, like, which way people are going to go. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, streaming is obviously the new 
yeah. is, is the record business. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I guess you could call it digital politics. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of a good name for a song, actually. I might have to <laughs> do that when I get upstairs. Child's Play. Yeah. Another banger. Thank you. Um, I was in New York recently. It's all over the video. Oh, right? yeah? Every, every five minutes. Every five minutes. So there's a line on there where you say, why are you acting light? Like, what's, what does that mean? Why you like, what, sorry? Acting light. Oh, oh like, like, yeah. act, act, like I'm acting like I'm light-skinned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the, line? The light, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> How did that come about? Uh, that's just like a, you know, that's just like sort of like something people, that's like very uh, an American thing to say. Like, oh man, you're being light skinned. Like, you know, um, like, I guess they'd like say it's like emotional, you know. Right. Um, okay. So I think it's a ridiculous stereotype, yeah, yeah. but I was just kind of yeah, yeah, playing yeah. on the irony yeah. of it because I'm actually light skinned. So it just, it just made, it made me laugh. So I said it. But yeah, I mean, it's just, it's like a silly. Silly stereotype in like you know black American culture that like light skinned guys are this yeah. way or that way or whatever. So it's just a little joke. Yeah. We do our thing though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't mind. So you know, with when when did you first experience racism? Because you, you come in from a dual heritage. You, your father's black. Your mom's white. Like it, it puts you in a predicament. You know, I found myself and other people have who come from like dual heritage backgrounds, but. When was the first time you really noticed, like, you get it from both sides or one side more than the other? Man, you know, I, I, I really, I've really been grateful in my life to um, be born in Canada and just the journey that I had growing up um, was so, it was just a very accepting journey. You know, I always had friends from all different backgrounds, mm. all different walks of life. We all get along. Mm. I've never really, you know, I never really notice color, religion. We just don't, we don't live like that. There's mm. really not that much segregation mm. in, in Canada, and especially in Toronto. You know, there's just so many, it's like a cultural mosaic, and I know I've said that time and time again, but it truly is. I mean, it's made up of so many, you know, beautiful people from beautiful places, and you get to actually learn, and you don't, like, what you don't ever develop, like, hate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the first time I really experienced it was when I got famous and, like, went to America, and people would challenge me, like, I don't understand how it works or mm. like, oh, you're Canadian. You'll never understand like the black American mm. struggle or you'll never under. It, that was the first time I really ever got challenged. And it was like by people that like, you know, I had met from America that mm. were like even close to me at the time. And, um, you know, if I ever feel anything or if I ever feel like an outsider, it's usually because I'm not American. Hmm. To, to be honest with you, that's when I feel like people are like, you know, against me or, hmm. or they feel like I'm not part of like the, and I, I guess maybe it has something to do with the fact that, you know, like I do, I have quite an, like a, an, an eclectic makeup, you know, hmm. I am, I am mixed, I am Jewish, you know, hmm. and, but yeah, I feel like, um, <clears throat> you know, at the end of the day, I'll tell you when it comes to, uh, when it comes to everything else, I'm black. Mm. You know, I am re referred to as a black artist. Like last night at that award show, I am I'm a black artist. You, you know, the Grammys. Yeah, mm. like I am. You know, I'm a, I'm apparently a rapper. Mm. You know, even though Hotline Bling is not a rap song, mm. the only category that they can manage to fit me in is in a rap category because maybe because I've rapped in the past or because I'm black. I can't figure out why. Just like I can't figure out why One Dance wasn't nominated, maybe because they can't. It's crazy. <clears throat> I mean, well, it's just there's there's pop obligations that they have, and I fluked out. Hmm. I fluked out and got one of the biggest songs of the year. That is a pop song, and I'm proud of that. You know, I love the rap world and I love the rap community. But you're right. I write I write pop songs for a reason. You know, I want to be like Michael Jackson. I want to hmm. be like artists that I looked up to. Those are pop songs. But I never get any credit for that, you know? And shout out, like, by the way, I'm speaking to you as a winner mm. from last night. I won right. two awards last night. Right. But I don't even want them because it just feels weird for some reason. It just doesn't feel right to me. Like, I don't, you know, I feel like almost like 
alienated or, or you're trying to purposely like alienate me by making me win rap or, or either just pacify me by handing me something, mm. putting me in that category because mm. it's the only place you can figure out where to, where to put me. Mm. And remember, they don't decide the winners, but they do decide the nominations, mm. you know, so they have to play it politically. Mm. And shout out to Chance for last yeah. night. Like I said, I'm speaking from a winner's point of view, yeah, and I'm yeah. so happy for him. Yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about, and like, you know, I'm, I'm not angry about the way last night worked out. Mm. But when you ask me, like, where, like, do I feel, um, like, racism, or do I feel it the same as anyone else? Like, yeah, I feel it. You know, I notice it going mm. on and in its, own, in its own places. But, you know, thankfully, um, I, 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 get to, uh, I get to be around the, the greatest group of people. My friends are from all over the place, you know, they're Lebanese, you know, they're, they're, uh, I'm Jewish, you know, some of my friends, most of my friends are from the islands, from Jamaica. English. Um, yeah, yeah, English, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. So, I mean, you know, we, we just don't, we just don't really, mm. we don't really notice it like that, mm. you know, until, until I, until I start talking about the, the, the music business. It's crazy as well, because the leaders of each country, so, for instance, Donald Trump, he's on a, anti-immigration tip, you know, there's the ban from people from certain countries. And, but then you've got Justin Trudeau, who's Prime Minister of Canada, who who's is like, by the, way, the total opposite. I mean, he's like my hero, basically. Mm. But How did it feel to be on stage in Manchester in the UK at the time when the Grammys was going on? Because a, a lot of us wouldn't do that. Some people would be like, yo, I've got to cancel the show and go back over there. It's like, you know, you stuck to the tour. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, 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 I did it because that, that at the end of the day is what matters to me. That's real, mm. that's real life, you know? Mm. And um, I was pitched by the Grammys to cancel those two shows and fly and go sit in the audience, you know, to lose, you know, to, to, because they don't air the other rap awards on TV. Mm. So I would have left 30,000 people hanging you know, um, to, to sit there and, and just, just be there for their own ratings, you know? Mm. And then the worst part is, like, um, I, I, I expressed myself, like, man, you know, I'm really thankful that I, that I was at those shows in Manchester because those were two of the strongest shows that we've had so far. And I, I text somebody from the Grammys and said, like, I, I'm, I'm really glad I stayed behind, you know? Mm. I really don't want to have this conversation mm. about coming out there again. And I got a text back that said, blame it on Donald Trump. I'm not going to say who it is yeah. that I'm texting, but this is like the institution yeah. that this is, this, we've been conditioned to think that this is the true reward yeah, yeah. For, our, for our accomplishments, for our music. And by the way, if you had a night like Chance last night, he deserves it. I mean, mm. for his friends, yeah, for his yeah, family, yeah. for his collaborators, it's amazing yeah. when they champion you. Yeah. But all I'm saying is, two kids that will be coming up in the future and might not get championed mm. or might not get that moment, that's okay too. Mm. Because you have to realize what institution you're dealing with. Mm. You're dealing with a bunch of people that are just people at the end of mm. the day. And they're either good people to the core or bad people to the core. And we'll never know, mm. you know? But, I mean, yeah, I, I, I was really glad that I was in Manchester last night. Like I said, I'm speaking from the perspective of a winner. I won two awards. It's just, it really put it all into perspective for me last night. Like, thank God I stayed here yeah. and did what I'm supposed to be doing for the people that actually care about my music. Yeah. Who's Quentin Miller? Uh, Quentin Miller. Quentin Miller is a, uh, is a kid that I was introduced to through Boy Wonder. Mm. Um, me and Boy Wonder were working on a project at the time. We had, I had said to him, I really want you to, I want to do a mixtape. Mm. I want to do it quick. I want to surprise people. And, um, and I want him to ex executive produce it. Mm. So we were working and we were like, you know, going through the motions of, you know, <clears throat> building a project. And he was like, yo, I got this kid. And, you know, sometimes I send him beats and he just cooks up ideas. Mm. And he's like, yo, his ideas, they aren't, they're good, mm. you know? Mm. He's like, they need work, but they're good. Mm. So, um... So yeah, at the time, uh, I was like, all right, dope, let's, let's collaborate, let's mm -hmm. like, let, line it up, you know? And, um, and yeah, I started, I started working with this kid and I think we ended up doing about five songs together um, in total, a few of which were on that project and a few of which mm -hmm. just made their way out. 
And um, yeah, I mean, he was a guy that I collaborated on music with. And I'm proud to sit here in front of you and say that, you know. Mm. Um, Meek Mill, at the time, uh, due to some like issue with Nicki, whatever it was, decided to create a narrative mm. that I don't write my own music because that was what was convenient mm. for him at the time. And he mm. caught wind of it. It's unfortunate, too, because Quentin was being managed by... Um, by, by DJ Drama and Don Cannon, right. who ended up really fucking his shit up, you know, mm. because they were just like really just messy with the shit mm. unnecessarily. Um, but yeah, you know, he decided to create this narrative that I don't write my own music. Mm. And the reason why I never felt like necessarily pressured to like sit down and defend mm. myself right away or mm. go do an interview is just because, I mean, anybody that was in those rooms, right, that worked on that project, or anybody that's been in any room with me, period, knows. First of all, knows that I am one of the best writers, period. Mm. That is what I do, that's what I'm known for. Mm. I mean, I've, I go and write for other people, I've, I write my biggest songs, my biggest hits. The massive majority of my catalog has all been written solely by me, which is a, which is a big feat, because music is a collaborative process. Mm. Um, and at that given time, you know, it, with those with those isolated with the, like with that ice, with those isolated records, um, they just wouldn't be what they were if it wasn't for me. You know, mm. I mean, if it wasn't for uh, my pen and my contributions to that, and no, not taking away from him. I mean, we did great work together mm. in a very small space, right. um, and. <clears throat> And yeah, you know, I mean, it really just kind of blossomed into this thing where I became the poster child for ghostwriting, mm. which is a huge conversation now in music. Mm. And if I was like an evil spirit, if I had like a different agenda, um, I could sit here and tell you how this shit really works. I could sit here and tell you 10, 20 people that are worse than me, mm. you know? That, 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 that literally take everything and it's just a verbatim process of, of but it, it, I'm not like that, you know? Mm. When my peers get a record, I'm happy. Mm. It's great, it doesn't matter where it comes from, I don't care, you know? Mm. Um, but for me, it was, a, it, it, was, it was a big deal because um, it just wasn't, it wasn't mm. the truth, you know? Mm. And, and like I said, but if I have to be the poster child for it and if, if, you, if you choose to after, after like, finding out about that situation, discredit my entire catalog or my career, or if, you were gonna discredit me anyway. So yeah, you yeah, may yeah, as well yeah. just go yeah. forward with that. And I, I'm, I've like come to, come to peace with that, you know mm-hmm. I mean? Um, but yeah, I, I, I really, um, when, when, it, when it came to that whole writing situation, I never felt the urge to like have to defend myself because if you mm-hmm. ask about any of the biggest Drake records ever, I've done them all. And if you ask about those Quentin Miller sessions, I was there, you Mm -hmm. know, I was working. I like there would be no second half of know yourself Mm -hmm. and the bars wouldn't be as good if it wasn't for me on any of those songs, you know, and we sit down and we talk about cadences and we talk about which lines to do and whatever, whatever. And that's just what a collaborative experience Mm -hmm. is. And if people are that naive and they think that that doesn't go on in music, then you're out of your Mm -hmm. mind. You know, Mm. but because it's me, it was my first, it was the first chink in my armor that people were like, oh, 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 we got, you know, we got him. (laughs) DJs were happy. There's people that carried away with it. Well, and that's the thing. Some DJs. Yeah, exactly. And that was the thing too. It's like, it really made me realize like how deep this shit really goes because, you know, um, there were like these references from our sessions when we'd worked together. Yeah. No context to those references at all, but they existed, you know? Mm. And that taught me a valuable lesson as well, which is just like, man, I can't trust anybody. You can't mm. leave the studio with nothing, we can, mm. you know? And um, like I said, like, you know, it was, it was really DJ Drama that got a call from somebody higher up at that time. You know, he didn't have the backbone to say no to this person. And he let, you know, he... He was like, yo, my, my, you know, my guy's getting roasted. You got to give up. You got to yeah. give him some ammo right. to keep, you know, to, we got to keep Drake down. And that was yeah. really when I realized, like, how yeah. deep this really yeah. is. And, um, 
And yeah, I mean that that whole situation, you know, it was what it was. And I and, and I can I can sit here right now. You could you could interview you could interview me, and you could ask him if he thinks it was worth it. I bet he'll tell you no. How did it feel, you know, to see it play out with me? And I'm and I'm asking this now, not because I'm trying to instigate or cause more trouble or anything, but just as a fan and as a DJ, seeing it unfold, like for both artists, like yourself and Meek, it was kind of. It was kind of crazy because it was like it just. I think as fans, we all thought everything was cool, and then Meek comes out, you know. And for you personally, though, how did that feel? Because you've been on tracks with him before, you know, the Amen joint and other stuff, you know. I mean, it's it's just a pattern in my career, you know. I, um, I there's just this one-sided switch that happens with people. I I don't understand it. You could ask me about a bunch of people in this mm -hmm. interview and you could literally ask me what 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 my problem is with them and I'll tell you I don't have one, mm -hmm. you know? Um I watched I watched him say that it was about uh uh, uh, uh <coughs> posting an album or some show that I found out about the day before that I couldn't get to in time. It's not about any of that. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody makes a decision to say, all right, everybody's supporting this guy. Maybe I should be the guy to go against him. Um, or they just have a series of events that gets them aggravated enough to do that. Um, that's what happens, you know? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, on display for the world, that was a terrible, impulsive decision because you weren't ready. And in my mind, you know, I study the game, and not only that, but I'm a very calculated thinker. I'm sitting here thinking you're ready hmm. for it. I was sitting here, like my mind was going a thousand miles a minute. I'm thinking this goes so high up that I'm about to see the craziest shit I've ever seen. I didn't know who was going to be on a diss track with him hmm. or what he had ready. Hmm. I thought this was like three months in the making, hmm. and I'm just like getting blindsided. Hmm. And, then when I, and then when I dropped Charged Up, just to see... Mm. What what just to kind of see what the what the mm. what what the preparation level was? I realized I, I was like, oh wow, you're you're not ready. This mm. was like really you're just emotions mm. about something. I don't even know what it was, but this is just your emotion. Okay, now now you know that that was the moment where it was. Um, I, I remember I was in the studio and. Uh, I was I was working on some beat. I knew I had to do something, you know. I knew I had to I knew I had to f retaliate because I realized he was unprepared. And when you realize someone was un is unprepared, you have to strike. And that was um I was in the studio and it was like some kind of like rap beat, you know. I probably would have gone like 80 bars on it. And um somebody that's very important to me said to me, um, "Listen, if you're going to do this, this next move, you have to finish it forever, and he has to live with it forever. That means he has to hear it all the time. It can't be some. <laughs> and I was like, you know, who said that? I, I, I can't. I, I, I can't. <laughs> um, that's, but a, that's a that's a it's cool. great advice, though. A true champion yeah, said yeah, it. Yeah. I'll put it to you that okay. way. It's not some. Right. Like, it's not one of my friends. Like a real, a real, a real person that like goes to war and like wins all the time. Like okay. a true champion, okay. you know, um, and. And that was when I just switched switched it around, you know. That was around like midnight, mm -hmm. and this kid this kid walked into the studio for the first time, um, and played a beat, and the beat was too slow. Mm -hmm. And I told Forty, man, I like the drums, mm -hmm. um, speed it up like mm -hmm. about fifteen BPM. And when he sped it up, he he just sped the whole beat up. He didn't just speed the drums mm -hmm. up. And that was when I just heard like, mm, 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 mm. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh man, I was like, I was like, all right, yeah. this is it. Yeah. And by 4.30 in the morning, the record was out, and that was, that was pretty much it. It was over. Back to Back was brutal. Like, line for line, you, you made it a club classic. Like, girls sing along with it, you but, know? But, you know, the biggest thing was, because I don't have real hatred for him, mm. the key was, like, first of all, my biggest focus the entire time was I cannot disrespect Nicki Minaj or mm. use Nicki Minaj in any way other than to lift her up. Mm. I, I, I just, that's not in my character, mm. you know? I didn't go the route of calling him a bunch of terrible names. Mm. and I just used wit. Mm. I just used wit and good writing, mm. ironically enough. Mm. Great writing mm. to just win that situation, mm. you know? Um, 
obviously, yeah, the beat became, I mean, the beat was perfect because it lived in the club. It didn't live, like, it wasn't like, oh, have you heard this? And then you listen to it two times and you dismiss it. No, like, people have to, like, DJs have to take a hit when you're hosting a party because they can't play the biggest record of the night because you're standing there. Yeah. You know, it, it hurt. It, I mean, it, it hurt, and I wanted it to hurt. You know, yeah. I really did, um, yeah. because you, you. It wasn't just like, oh man. You know, I could take a lot of things, mm. a lot of criticism, a lot of like, you know, negativity. People say terrible things about me, and that's mm. fine. You know, that mm. is just unfortunately this very sad generation we live in, where you know people get off on like bullying people mm. on the internet, and so I can take all that. But man, you really tried to like, no, and you. You know how good I am at writing music, mm. but you really tried to not only spin the entire narrative of my career, but like end my life and like mm. take food from my family and like really try and like pretty mm. much end it all. And you didn't even do it through music. You just talked or tweeted. Mm. It was like it was like sickening to me. Like I had to really I had to really get revenge on that situation. And like I said, you know. Like, I, I respect revenge when it's warranted, and that was just mm. warranted, you know, and it was what it was. And, um, and it's, it's not something, like, again, it's not something that I'm, I'm proud of because it, 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 um, it took just, just as much of an emotional toll on me. Mm. I mean, maybe not as much as it did on him, but it took an emotional toll on me. You know, it was just a lot. You know, you always mm. got to hear about it mm. and... You know, um, even just seeing people get so riled up off negativity, it didn't feel great, but it, it just was what, it, what had to happen at the time. And, um, and yeah, I guess that's just kind of rap as a sport, you know. And, and finally, I've always said the problem with rap is we never have a trophy at the end of the year or any stats to prove. Finally, it's just like a clear win, hmm. You know, and it, it, you know, that was the only part about it that felt good was like, oh, I finally got to compete when I was doubted mm. and win. And that was like, you know, that was pretty much the only positive of it. But the rest of it was just all trash, man. It was like, it was just, it was just embarrassing to, to, to witness, you know. And if he had like revealed some huge thing, you know, mm. you would have heard a lot more people like, like peers of mine like chime in. I mean, mm. you know, I think every single person that I've ever worked with or shared studio time with knows how hard I work, man. Mm. And like to try and discredit me for that is, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, that's just what I'm known for. That's what I do, you know, so. Jay-Z and Nas, they said some savage things about each other, mm -hmm. like, you know, and it's been brewing for years, like back to back. There's a lot of subliminals that was going on. Now they're friends, now they work together. Do you think you'll ever see a situation like that of yourself and me, like time heals all wounds? Um, well, Jay-Z and Nas said some crazy shit about each other. Yeah. I mean, they weren't yeah. really deep and personal. Yeah. Um, I, our, our thing wasn't that bad. Um, you know, that's just not somebody that I ever really want to be friends with. You know, I think Jay-Z has a mutual respect for Nas. I just really don't have that level of respect for him because of his actions. So I'm not really looking to be friends or cordial. Like, for example, like, I have respect for Ross because I have a history with Ross. Mm -hmm. With Meek, you know, I did a lot of things. Like, I put you on your first tour. I flew to Philly to shoot the Amen, with, Amen video with you. I was always there. We were always supportive. And you just chose to flip. So... It's just more like, let's just go, like, it's over, mm -hmm. let's go on with life. You know, I even like out here, like, I don't even perform back to back. It's mm -hmm. not even like, it's like, it's not really, it's something that happened and it is what it is. Unfortunately for him, it's a part of history, rap history. But at the end of the day, it's really something that's over and done mm -hmm. with. And um, yeah, I mean, like, I'm not really like, I'm not trying to make any songs or like mm -hmm. be boys or none of that. Sh like, I'm good. I feel mm -hmm. great. I'm happy with my friends. I'm happy doing my music over here. And you know it doesn't need to go. It doesn't need to go anywhere from here because mm. we look stupid if we keep it mm. going. But it's just like, yeah. I mean, like you know. I mean, all blessings to Jay and Nas for coming together after all those years. And I can't predict what's going to happen in the future. Mm. But right now, mm. like, nah, I'm good. Just be over there. I'll be over here. That's it. How did you first hook up with Skepta? I've been a fan of Skepta for 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 a long time. Um, Oliver Oliver really linked me and Skepta up. And, um, yeah, it was just, uh, just really, really respected his movement, really respected his talent, felt like he should just be bigger than he was. Um, I honestly, I can, I, I think that the best rappers in the world are in, are in London. I just think the, uh, 
the complexity and the cadences and the way they piece music together. Like, I mean, from the grime scene to how now grime has evolved, where you got a guy like Giggs who has a huge club record, mm. but you're still getting bars off. Mm. That's always what I've sort of like, mm. that's been my formula for life is like, okay, I'm going to do the club, mm. but I'm still going to give you bars. Mm. I just really like, I really respect a lot of London, a lot of London MCs, and Skepta was just the first guy that I really um, got a chance to build with. Mm. And, and then, that, you were shouting out Sneak Bow, like, oh, <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. See, I mean, I've been on it, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. even like, because, yeah. you know, even coming from Toronto, it's our worlds are so similar mm. that, like, when 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 Brixton and Pecky were beefing, mm. right, we used to watch that and be like, yo, this is just like home. Like, right. you know, the way they talk and like how cra- it, it reminds us of, of Toronto. Right. So we used, I, I mean, I used to sit and watch hours of just all these different guys and try and learn the inner workings of what mm. was going on. Um, like, uh, oh man, who's, who is um, Sneak Bo's uh, light skin brethren? Uh, Johnny Gu- uh, Johnny yeah, yeah, Guns, remember yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, all those yeah, guys, yeah. you know, like yeah, I used yeah. to just watch those videos and yeah. Um, and then from there, I like you know after all the like the, the wild videos, yeah. I used I started learning about like the real, yeah, yeah. Um, just the real G's in, yeah, yeah. in and not to say that those those yeah. guys aren't talented, but I'm talking about like the real foundation of yeah, yeah. Of, of London of London rap, and you know Skepta was obviously the first guy I linked with, and we just our teams clicked, mm. you know our vision clicked. He brought the WizKid record to me. We did it. Mm. And, um, you know... I think that was one of the dopest tracks as well. I think, again, talking about the whole international thing, I think. I ain't going to try and pronounce it. But we don't want to butcher it. (laughs) (laughs) But it's, it's, you know, I think think Skepta did one of his hottest verses and the way that it was like the conscious, like, thing that he was saying, you know, about the way people were portrayed on TV back in the day and everything, I think. Drizzy, WizKid, Skepta... But I it, even bigger crazy. to skip for like even just break like when he brought that to me, it 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 really kind of like you know I, I can honestly say like I I don't know if my mind would have been as open to a one dance or a controller if I hadn't have done that record with Skep and been like okay I rapped on that record right. or like kind of like sort of rap sang on that record. <clears throat> But yo, I could like I can get on, I could get on one of these tunes and actually like yo, this is our music. Like this mm. is all we're all intertwined. You know, Afro beats, Toronto, the Jamaican mm. culture, dance hall, London. Mm. You know, so that like you know, I I, I gotta I gotta hail Skep for that because, you know, that was a turning point for me. Mm. Um, and it's funny because I just recorded Hotline Bling, in a hotel room, right right before I recorded that Skeptiverse. So I right. did both those in in the yeah. same night. Um, but yeah, you know, it was, it was, it was a, it was a big thing. And then, you know, at the time, unfortunately, Skep's, Skep's Bredgen had passed away, mm-hmm. you know, Lukey. Yeah. And, um, we just kind of like found solitude in, 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 in each other. And, you know, we were just supporting him and, you know, from, from wireless to OVO Fest mm-hmm. to making the, the OVO shirts for his boy. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was important to us, you know, mm-hmm. Skep, Skep, Skep was really important to us. And, mm-hmm. um. And then, and then from there, you know, I've known Shola Ama for like mm. nine years. Yeah, you ten talked years. about her like early. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I've known her so yeah. just off like a MySpace thing. Yeah. We just used to talk all the time. And um, <laughs> so, like, just like I was a fan, not like yeah. that. <laughs> I was a fan, sorry, man. Sorry. I was a fan. Imagine, <laughs> imagine remix. That was my, yeah. that was my shit. Shout all out right. to Craig David too. You know, that all was right. like big influences. So. You know, I remember I was out for dinner with Shola one night, and she's like, "This is like years. It was a while back." She's like. Um, yo, like, I know, I know you know, but like, yo, do you know about gigs? Like, yeah. do you know about gigs? Do you understand, like, how many, like, crazy legendary records gigs has, mm-hmm. and, like, how ill he is at rapping? And that was when she played me Talking the Hardest for the first right. time. And my mind was just blown, man. I was like, yo, these yeah. guys are too good. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, I just, I just made, I just made it a point to, to shine light um, on a- as much as I can. That's what mm-hmm. I'm here for. You know, I'm mm-hmm. in a really, really blessed position, and um, people 
like try again because of all the bullshit people try and like flip everything on mm. me like oh man you're you're used like you got gigs on a record mm. you're just using the culture it's like nah mm. man i'm showing mm. love bro mm. to these guys you can ask gigs mm. like you know those are big moments for him mm. and me you know i i enjoy that like i want to be remembered and yeah. i want to be remembered in in london in the uk scene as like yo drake rated us man you know the craziest thing you did was on the night of the Brits, which is, you know, it's like UK equivalent to the Grammys, he came off stage, went straight to the Section Boys yeah. show. Yeah. That's crazy. But that's just like, that's just something that like, you know, Skep was like, yo, I'm going to Section show. And I just performed with Ree. Right. You know, and I told Ree like, yo, I'm going to meet up with you after. I'm going to roll with, <laughs> I'm going to roll with Skep. You know, I, yeah. I was in, I was, I was at the Section Boys show in the same outfit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. so... I mean, yeah, those are just things that are really important to me, yeah. man. Like, I love supporting, you know, like, section of Young Gunners, Dave, mm. um, AJ Tracy, mm. you know. Um, how, did, how did you, how did Wanna Know come to your attention? Man, it, it's, it's, it's a crazy story. There's these, um, like, I don't know what the YouTube account is, but um, there's this, like, there's just, like, this guy that compiles, he'll be like, oh, here's 50 songs you need to know from Chicago. Here's 50 songs you need to know from Toronto. Right. So I, I usually always, like, I'm always watching the Toronto mm -hmm. ones to be like, yo, who's, like, who's, yeah, yeah, who's yeah. got new tunes in our city? Yeah, because I always pay attention. Yeah. And then he did a London one. Right. So I was watching it. And honestly, I was watching it. I had my phone, like, on my chest. And I was falling asleep. I had my headphones yeah. in. And I was, like, 37, 38 minutes in. And the Dave song started. And I like kind of woke up and I like mm. looked at the screen and it says the title underneath. Mm. So I exited out of it mm. and I went on and I listened to the song. I was like, yo, this song is so good. Yeah. I don't know who the kid is. I'm praying that he's, I'm praying that he's a good you, you know, I'm praying <laughs> that. Cause you know, sometimes these guys, they get, you know, yeah, you yeah. never know who you're going to show love to. Yeah, sometimes yeah. people get weird on you, you know? Yeah, so yeah. I don't ever even, want... Even at your stage, even at your status. Well, even worse in that sense, you know? Okay. It's just, I have like, I have a thing on me where, I mean, we, we'll talk about that later. I'll mm. finish, I'll finish, I'll finish the Dave story first. I, so I, I just, I heard this record and I, I hit Oliver right away. That's mm. who I always, whenever I need to get in touch with mm. anyone, I always, I always hit <laughs> Oliver. So I say, yo, this kid from, from London, mm. You know, uh, you gotta find out about it because mm. I really want to beat, see if I could do a remix. Mm. And then obviously, of course, Morgan ends up knowing who manages him, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, we just put it together like that. And then on top of it, the, the, the cherry on top was just that everyone was like, yo, that kid's a good, good you. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's yeah. a good kid. Nice dope. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, yeah, we j I, just, I just did it, sent it back to him. We played it on OVO Sound Radio, we put it up on Apple Music and all that. and. It was great, man. It was it was uh, it was just a great moment for both of us. Mm. But yeah, I mean, just to go back to what you were talking about, it's like, you know, I feel like um, sometimes I'm <clears throat> I'm I'm fighting against like uh, how 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 big how big it's all gotten for me. Mm. Um, and when I have genuine intentions to always like big people up and show mm. love, sometimes it gets twisted, you know? And I think that, again, just like the writing thing, there's like another thing that, that people tend to like just bring up in, in, mm. as, a, as, a, uh, as a negative about me. Like, oh, you're, you're taking from the culture and mm. this, that, and the third. And it really, it, 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 that bothers me as well because mm. it's like, People go so far, they reach so far. Like the other mm. day, you know, I dropped the song with gigs. Mm. And I'm seeing all this on my on my IG mm. under like some random picture of people being like, ah, oh, you took this kid's flow or whatever, right? So I'm just like, yo, yeah. what's happening to me right now? You yeah. know, so I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm trying to read, like figure mm. out who they're talking about. Mm. I find out who they're talking about. I Is this go, the extension guy? I, yeah, I, I don't even think that's how you say his name. I, I, but, but yeah, that's I, I, I tried to find. They call him X. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. So anyway, I go and I find what song they're talking about, mm. you know, and I, and, you know, and I and I listen to it. I'm like, okay, I I see where mm. people could draw like this mm. comparison off of like mm. the first two lines, whether it be the cadence or the rhyme pattern, mm. or whatever, you know. And I, I just like, I'm just like, yo, it, it's crazy that people think that after all this time after all I've been through that I'm the type of person to go pre some 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 song that's on SoundCloud. It doesn't have like two plays. It mm -hmm. has plays, you know, he has his cult following and go and think that I'm gonna like 
take that and make mm. it my own. Like I'm not stupid. I'm not mm. a. I'm not like a sh- person like that. You know. So it just. How does it feel to be at the top of the game now? Um. I, I, I don't know. You've done it. I, I, I guess I. Feel, you know. Sometimes like it's 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 a it's mixed feelings. You know. Sometimes, you know. There's there's nights where I um, go into the O2 and see all that love. Mm. And I feel like, you know, I feel like the greatest emotions I've ever felt. And then there's nights where I just feel like, man, like, you know, sometimes I feel like the most hated or, you know, sometimes I still feel like a huge underdog. Like people just kind of almost um, are too scared to even like give me like support or credit because they don't want to like beat because that's too like cliche. Like, I don't want to support that because we already know. So mm-hmm. let's find the next thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but. I, I just, I, listen, I really enjoy making music. I make music for all the people that buy all these tickets and come out and mm-hmm. party with me every night. I make music for my friends. Uh, I make music about real experiences. And I just am addicted to it. I can't, you know, I, I don't like stopping. I, mm-hmm. I go on vacation and I start going nuts. I don't know what to do with myself. Because uh, I'm just, you know, it's just an inspiring time for us. My And... It's been that way for like eight solid years now. Why is More Life a playlist and it's not classed as an album? Um, the style in which it's being put together is uh, based off of our concepts. That is OVO Sound Radio. Uh, you'll kind of hear it when you hear the project. Mm. I love the way it's put together, by the way. It's really put together <coughs> as a seamless listen. It's almost like a radio show. Basically, I, I, I asked myself, like, man, what would happen if I just did an OVO sound radio, but every song was a new Drake song? Hmm. That was kind of my, my idea for it. And plus, like, how it's being released, which, I mean, that, only that guy knows the answers. But, um, but yeah, it'll, <laughs> it'll all kind of come to fruition. It, it's, just, it's just more an evolution of the mixtape. Um, you know, it was kind of getting tough to be like, hey, I'm dropping a mixtape, but it's for sale on yeah. iTunes. It just kind of like, oh, so yeah. that's your album. And I really didn't want people yeah. to say, this is my next album. You know, right. Views was my album. This mm. is something that after Views, mm. I was just inspired. I wanted to, you know, keep the music flowing. Mm. I want to keep people excited, giving people the, the story to my life. And, you know, I don't do this too, too mm. often. I don't sit with people. Like, I just don't, I don't. I, I don't really enjoy it. I, I, I like to uh, I like to just save it for the music. With more life, you got gigs on there. Mm-hmm. Massive look. Mm-hmm. That's like that's that's like because gigs is official out here. He's you know he's one of the realest. Right. Um, he's lived it. You know he's done it, and he represents the streets to the fullest out here. So, what was it like working with him? Like when you was putting a joint together. I mean, me, me and Giggs more just became, like, friends. Like, you know, Giggs is one of those guys that, you know, if he takes a liking to you, um, it, it just, you know, he, you just kind of have to build that vibe with him. Um, and then, you know, from him kind of knowing my friend. Like, he was really into Baca, who's, like, one of, my, one of my best friends who's on the road with me. But he liked his music. So we would talk about that. Mm-hmm. I would always big him up on, like, features. Like, he did, like, the song for Suspect called Wonder What. He did, like, a remix. I, was, mm-hmm. I would hit him about that. Like, Yo, I'm playing that. I would send him videos when we were playing Whipping Excursion in L.A. And people were going crazy. Um, and it just kind of built from there, like, a real genuine friendship. And then um, we, we kind of got into this thing where it would be like, yo, uh, like, I'll send you something. And then he'd send it back and he'd kill it. Right. And then I was like, all right, all right. And then every time I got in the studio, I'd be like, yo, I'm going to send this to Giggs. <laughs> Me and Giggs have like, like, four, like three or four songs. I mean, one's for his project. I got two on More Life. And then, and then another one's just kind of there. But... Um, but yeah, we we we're, we're also again competitive rappers in a great way, you know. Like Giggs is like the verse, like his verses are just too catchy and too mm-hmm. good, and that's what I pride myself on as well. So we just have fun, kind of competing and talking to each other about what you know, what bars were, were what what bars we enjoyed from each other, and yeah, it was good. We just built a good rapport. It was natural. Everybody that I have on the road that's met him has mm. made a point to come to me and be like, yo, Giggs is like a real G. Mm. Like, he's like a good, good 
pure soul, you know? Mm. And that's like, that's tough, you know? Not a lot of people make a point to come and tell me that, like every night when they meet people. So, yeah, I mean, he's just somebody that I support. And again, he's somebody that I feel like he should be, he should be one of the biggest rappers, as big as he could possibly get. So I'm just gonna do everything I can to, to make, try and make that happen, you know? And he's doing it all by himself, mm -hmm. basically. You know, with the music, you're killing it. It's like you, you've got, you got the Midas touch. Everything you're doing is popping. And, you know, it's the same goes for OVO. It, it, it feels like a very real, you know, organization. I don't want to sound so corporate, but like what you guys do and the teams and we're the people involved. We're a firm, like real, you know, like the old, like, we're like, a, we're like an old English firm, like, you know, like the real, <laughs> they're Britain, like the firms in Britain. That's, that's what we consider as well. How do you feel about the impact of OVO Radio, though? Because I think out of, you know, um, Beats 1, that's had the most impact as a show. Like, that was an appointment to listen. I know people who were like, yo, yo, go, go, got you. Mm -hmm. Like, to the, yo, did you hear that? I know, yo, it's on OVO Radio, you know? Like, it was like, I know people who play the rips from the show, yeah. like, just with the ident. So it's almost like that. It's almost like, it's almost like mixtapes from back in the day, like yeah. a clue mixtape or something. It's like, it... it it's crazy the impact that you're having and it's truly international though. You know, I think hip hop before it's always been very, you know, US is the home of hip hop, US centric, right. but you guys have opened the doors to like the whole world and there's a shift, I think, in the acceptance of music from other countries. And I think, I think you guys have play, played a big part in it, you know. OVO Sound Radio was like the first of its kind, you know, that's why, um, like, you know, Future set up the, the situation for us with Jimmy and with Apple. And um, yeah, it was just, you know, the, the OVO blog, I don't know if you remember yeah, the yeah, OVO yeah, blog yeah, that we used yeah. to run, but that used to be kind of yeah. like our headquarters. I got my tracks from that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, used to be, that used to be our headquarters, and that used to be kind of where we could really share exclusive thoughts, mm. exclusive music with people, mm. and it became a hub to check in with. Mm. And we haven't had that in a while because of just how everything's just so accessible and nobody like it's, it's all so spread out and i think ovo sound radio like you you know i think you summed it up perfectly it's like you got to make an appointment to listen mm. because you just really never know what you, what you're gonna hear and it's 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 great feeling i mean we all gather around and listen like even mm. when, especially when we know we're playing new music <clears throat> We all sit there and turn our phones on, no mm. matter where we're at, mm. and listen. And it just makes it it makes it fun again. It just reminds mm. you of those mixtape days. It reminds you of those like exclusive like New York radio rap days, yeah. and um, or even out here like when they break a song on the radio. Mm. It's just it's it's something that's fun. It's something that brings people together. And I know now like they have a bunch of um, a bunch of different people with different shows, and you know it's going really well for them. Mm. But I don't think anybody has the um, like the uh, cachet of music mm. to be able to continue to mm. engage people with exclusives. You don't hold back. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why I'm here. That's my, but that that's that's like you know I feel like that's the true blessing of OVO Sound mm. Radio is. Um, you know, we've got so many artists that are always willing to fire something off. You know, if it's not me, it's Party, it's Roy, it's Magic, it's Division. Mm. You know, and if it's not them, then it's just some some like guys from our city that we want mm. to to be known. Or it's like you know people that link us from London. Like, yo, we have a new tune. Mm. Can you just? I, and I like that. You know, people hit us up like, yo, I have a new song. Can you play it on OVO Sound Radio? Mm. And it means a lot to get a text like mm. that because it's like, wow, you know, you could debut it anywhere you want, really. Mm. And it's nice to know that our platform is respected, and that mm. we, me and me and Ollie, always kind of told ourselves like, "Yo, those episodes have to be collectibles, man. Mm. Like someone has to put those mm. all together one day and just mm. kind of be like, yo, like these, like those are like moments in time, you know." Mm. Um, and yeah, it's just it's it's been a really exciting journey. It's a lot, though, you know. Mm. I mean, it's every two weeks, so. I do every week. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but you don't make music though. That's the difference. True, true. You gotta find yeah, other yeah, people's yeah, yeah, music. True, we gotta true. find like we yeah, gotta yeah. find reasons to keep people yeah. listening. Yeah. So, yeah, it's um, it's 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 quite a task to take on, but um, you you know, you got you got to keep them engaged. You got to drop frequently, but it also has to be music that has longevity. You know, it can't just disappear in two or three weeks or in two months. You know, you, that's the goal. So. 